Let's see what you have. Let's see what that does. If that doesn't work, then we'll have to revisit single payer. And we've done the important things of putting insurers' feet to the fire, making them be competitive and show their prices in a way which can allow comparison shopping. Let's see how that works. If that doesn't work, then we're going to have to revisit some kind of single payer system. This is the last, this bill is the last best hope for private insurance. That's it. Oh, there he is, Grubering again, I guess. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. So we're joined right now. I'm so happy whenever I get to see her and speak to her. It's Ellie Pipes, president of the Pacific Research Institute and healthcare policy expert who worked uh, in, uh, right here in New York City for Rudy Giuliani. You were his healthcare advisor. One of four, yes. Yeah, yeah. very excited. Well, welcome back. Always good to see you. The single payer, you're, you had a great piece at NR, uh, National Review Online right. about how the single payer has failed. In Canada, where I'm yes, from, yes, and yes. anywhere around the world where they've tried yeah, it, yes. Yeah, and, and how it's, obviously, it would, it, it, that's still the goal of many on the left, always has been, is, right. uh, and, and as, they, as they see this disaster unfold, how many of them keep saying, well, we need a single payer, that also, we only need a single payer, which is what they wanted from the beginning. Right, exactly. And of course, Senator Tom Harkin, former Senator Tom Harkin from Iowa, has come out and said, well, you know, we could have been more efficient, more, less costly if we'd actually gone right to single payer. And we had the votes in the House and the Senate to do it, but they didn't, thank goodness. But um, single payer is not good for people's health. I mean, I'm Canadian. I grew up under it. You have long waiting lists. The average Canadian, Steve, today waits on average 18 weeks from seeing a primary care doctor See, getting treatment by a specialist. It's inconceivable to, to someone like me who's a hypochondriac and, and could pick up the phone and, and, and call a specialist and get there within a week. Right, exactly. And for me, you know, who, you know, as you know, my own mother died of colon cancer I, I, I in Canada. I always hate to bring that up to but, you, but, but I want you to tell the story, yeah. Because, you know, as she went to her primary care doctor, and so she thought she had colon cancer. They said, well, no, you don't. We did it. We've done an x-ray. There's no colon cancer there. You don't detect colon cancer with an x-ray. I said, mom, you need to have a colonoscopy. So she said, okay. I called the doctor. I need a col My daughter says I need a colonoscopy. She lives in the States. He said, well, we can't get you a colonoscopy. You're a senior. You know, we, we've got people, young people waiting with real serious problems. And so, you know, she finally got to the emergency room in Vancouver. Uh, two days in the emergency room, two days in the transit lounge. She died two weeks later. She did get a colonoscopy, but metastasized colon cancer. Is this what the American people want? No, we've seen the polls right through from 2010. You know, we've seen 54% of Americans do not want um, Obamacare, and they certainly won't want single payer. And I think the first time I spoke with you uh, on the radio, it was right after you wrote a piece that appeared in the New York Post about your mom. And at that time, it wasn't that far uh, removed from Obama actually saying when he was running in 08 on ABC to Charlie Gibson, I think, that we have to have a serious conversation about end-of-life care. And, and that fits right into the story with your mother. And that's what they really think. That's what they think. They, they, there's going to be a formula. And, and he, remember the woman stood up and said, my mother, she's 90, but she's got a, she's got a young heart. She's got, and he said, well, can't really make exceptions. Right. You know, can't formulate in her heart, her young heart. They, they're going to go by a formula, and we're going to have rationing, and the elderly are going to get stuck. Right, exactly. And, you know, one of the parts of Obamacare that is going to lead to rationing, if they ever appoint the 15 members to the Independent Payment Advisory Board, that's a rationing board. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it has to be repealed. And I think maybe with the election results, maybe next year um, we can see IPAB being repealed. And, and you know, and, and they're going to do it piecemeal. Uh, would you advise, you know, that, that their plan is, you know, uh, pass a bill, getting rid of this, pass a bill, getting rid of that, and then let the president, you know, veto it or whatever, try to override it. But if not, then take it to 2016 in the election there. But but here's the thing: so many people haven't felt. How many people have lost their their their? A year ago, we were sitting here saying, you know, X amount of million have lost their health care, and Obama's excuse was, well. You know, you didn't know you had a subpar policy, and if you got sick, you would have been screwed. So I'm saving you. But that hasn't kicked in for the 80 million people who are going to be in that same boat. Right. Remember, if you like your health care plan, uh, you like your doc, you yeah. can keep it. Well, we're now seeing how the American people are not signing up for the exchanges. And, and the number originally they thought for next year that about 13 million would sign up on healthcare.gov and the various state plans. But now they've downgraded that to 9 million. We've seen, remember they said 8.1 million yeah. this year. They've had to downgrade that to 6.7 million. Yeah. And people who have 
in coverage on the exchange are upset. Premiums are up, deductibles are up, oh, deductibles. and no access to the doctors and hospitals that, that they were going had, to had to before. And of course, uh, you know, so there's a reports that uh, they are using dental sign-up numbers to right. inflate the numbers. And four hundred thousand yeah, were just yeah. on dental, and, and of course, you know, that that doesn't solve your if you have, you know, if you think you have cancer or you have no, HIV, your dental no. plan is not going to no, take care of you. I went to the you. dentist this morning for my uh, six-month cleaning, and uh, it, all they did was clean my teeth. You're right. absolutely right. Yeah. It's always so good to see you stay on top of it keep writing what you're writing and talking about what you're talking about because right. we got to defeat this thing oh absolutely it's in the next year next two years are very important absolutely. and we've got to get rid of it all right you need to testify before congress yeah. every every day yeah. sally pice president of the pacific research institute uh, ladies and gentlemen here on the steve malsberg show and uh, when we come back we'll have the latest on uh, new york and ferguson don't go away newsmax television